James Sterling had spent what he believed to be the last 20 years on the alien world of Zaloria. Married to multiple Amazonian women as part of a cultural integration after he crash-landed on their planet, his life was a blend of adventure and domesticity, filled with the excitement of new experiences and the warmth of familial bonds. One morning James awoke with a strange sense of disorientation. His body felt heavier, his mind clouded. He struggled to remember the events of the previous day. As he looked around his spacious home, filled with the trappings of both Zalorian and Earth cultures, he noticed something amiss. The usual vibrant colors seemed muted, and the air felt different. His wives, always attuned to his moods, quickly gathered around him. The leader of his wives, a fierce and intelligent woman named Anaya, approached him with concern etched on her face. James, you seem troubled. What is it? James shook his head, trying to clear the fog in his mind. I don't know, Anaya. I feel... different. How long have we been together? Anaya's eyes softened with a mixture of love and sorrow. James, it's been two hundred years since you arrived on Zaloria. James's heart skipped a beat. Two hundred years, but it feels like only twenty. Anaya led James to the ancient Council of Elders, who were the keepers of Zaloria's most profound secrets. As they entered the sacred chamber, the elders greeted them with solemn nods. James, still reeling from the revelation, felt a surge of urgency. He needed answers. The eldest of the council, a wise and venerable woman named Alicia, stepped forward. James, we have long known this day would come. The temporal distortion field that surrounds Zaloria affects time differently for those not born here. For you, twenty years have passed. For us, it has been two centuries. James felt a wave of dizziness. Why was I never told about this? Alicia's eyes held a mix of compassion and regret. It was deemed too great a burden for you to bear. We hoped you would find happiness and fulfillment here without the weight of that knowledge. James looked at his wives, each of them showing signs of long life and wisdom far beyond what he had perceived. The reality of his situation sank in deeply. I need time to process this. Anaya, always the pillar of strength, held his hand. We will be here for you, James. No matter what. James spent the following days in contemplation, trying to reconcile his feelings with the reality of his extended life. He wandered through the village, observing the subtle changes he had missed. The structures were more advanced, the customs more evolved. His children and grandchildren, now grown and thriving, approached him with respect and love. One evening, as he sat by the stream where he had first fallen in love with Zaloria, Anaya joined him. She sat beside him in silence, waiting for him to speak. Anaya, James began, his voice heavy with emotion. I thought I had twenty years here. Now I learn it's been two hundred. My life on earth feels like a distant dream. Anaya leaned against him, her presence comforting. You have given us so much, James. Your love, your knowledge, your strength. We are a better people because of you. James looked into her eyes, finding solace in her unwavering support. I need to find a way to move forward to accept this reality and continue living with purpose. Anaya smiled gently, and we will face it together, as we always have. With renewed determination, James resolved to embrace his extended life on Zaloria. He would continue to lead, love, and build a future for his family and tribe. The revelation had shaken him, but it had also opened his eyes to the depth of the world he had come to call home. And so, with his wives and family by his side, James prepared to face the challenges and joys of the centuries to come, knowing that love and unity would guide them through. Over the next few weeks, James struggled to come to terms with the revelation of his extended life on Zaloria. His daily routines, once comforting, now seemed surreal as he grappled with the notion of having lived for two centuries. He wandered through the village, observing the subtle changes he had missed. The structures were more advanced, the customs more evolved and his children and grandchildren, now grown and thriving, approached him with respect and love, though he still felt a profound sense of displacement. Anaya, always attuned to his moods, offered unwavering support. One evening, as they sat under the twin moons of Zaloria, she took his hand and spoke softly. James, we have shared so much. Our children, our lives together. We must move forward. James nodded, though his heart was heavy. It's just hard to comprehend. My life on Earth seems like a distant memory. 
Anaya's eyes met his, filled with a deep, abiding love. We have built something beautiful here, James. Focus on what we have created together. Determined to adjust to his new reality, James threw himself into his work. He spent hours each day helping to rebuild and improve the village, integrating the knowledge he had gained from both Earth and Zeloria. The villagers, grateful for his efforts, began to look to him not just as a leader, but as a symbol of resilience and strength. One afternoon, as he worked on repairing a communal building, a young girl named Zara approached him. Father James, she said hesitantly, I found this in the archives. It's a record of your arrival in the time distortion field. James took the ancient worn document from her, his heart pounding. The scroll detailed the scientific phenomena that had caused his perception of time to warp. Reading through it, James finally began to understand the mechanics behind his 200-year life. He shared his newfound understanding with Anaya that evening. The time distortion field affects anyone not native to Zaloria. It's why I've aged so slowly and why 20 years feels like 200. Anaya listened intently, her eyes wide with curiosity. But what does this mean for us? For our future? James took a deep breath. It means we need to prepare for the possibility that I might live much longer than we anticipated. We need to plan for our family's future, knowing that time will continue to move differently for me. As James began to find his footing again, a new threat loomed over Zaloria, a neighboring alien faction, envious of the harmony and prosperity of the Amazonian society, sought to disrupt their peace. Skirmishes at the borders began to escalate, and it became clear that war was imminent. James, ever the protector, volunteered to lead a defense force. His military training from Earth, combined with the skills he had honed over centuries on Zaloria, made him a formidable leader. His wives, especially Anaya, supported his decision. You are our strength, James. Lead us to victory, Anaya said, her eyes filled with determination. The first major battle against the invaders was brutal. James and his force fought valiantly, using both traditional Zalorian tactics and innovative strategies he introduced. The enemy was strong and relentless, but James's leadership inspired his warriors to fight with unparalleled courage. In the midst of battle, James's thoughts often drifted to his wives and children. Their faces gave him the strength to push through the pain and fatigue. He knew he was fighting not just for the present, but for the future of Zaloria. Despite their valiant efforts, the war dragged on, taking a toll on everyone. Supplies dwindled and morale began to wane. James realized they needed a decisive victory to turn the tide. He devised a daring plan to infiltrate the enemy stronghold. It was risky. But if successful, it would cripple their ability to continue the war. Anaya and a group of elite warriors volunteered to join him. Under the cover of darkness, James and his team made their way into the enemy's territory. The mission was fraught with danger, but their determination never wavered. They encountered numerous obstacles, including traps and heavily armed patrols. As they approached the stronghold's core, the tension was palpable. Every sound seemed magnified every shadow a potential threat. James led with precision, his earth-honed instincts guiding him through the alien terrain. Finally, they reached the command center, where the enemy's leaders coordinated their attacks. James and his team launched a surprise attack, catching the enemy off guard. The battle within the stronghold was fierce and chaotic. James fought with a mix of desperation and determination, knowing that the outcome of this mission could change the course of the war. His warriors followed his lead, their movements precise and deadly. In the midst of the chaos, James confronted the enemy commander, a formidable and ruthless tactician. The two clashed in a brutal fight, each trying to outmaneuver the other. James drew on every ounce of his training and experience, pushing himself to the limit. With a final, decisive strike, he defeated the commander, signaling the end of the battle. With the stronghold taken and the enemy leader defeated, the tide of the war turned. The enemy forces, now leaderless and disorganized, began to retreat. James and his team returned to Zaloria as heroes, their victory bringing hope and relief to their people. Back in the village, the tribe celebrated their triumph, but the cost of war was evident. Many had been lost and the scars of battle ran deep. James, though hailed as a savior, felt the weight of each life lost. Anaya, sensing his turmoil, comforted him. You saved our people, James. We will heal, and we will remember those who fought and fell. 
The months that followed were dedicated to healing and rebuilding. James and his wives worked tirelessly to restore their village and support the families of those who had been lost. The bonds within the community grew stronger as they faced their grief together. James also took time to reflect on his own life, the centuries he had lived, and the love that had sustained him. He realized that while the passage of time had been distorted, the depth of his relationships and experiences had not. Despite the initial success of the infiltration mission, the war against the neighboring alien faction continued to drag on. Supplies dwindled, and morale among the villagers began to wane. James realized that they needed a decisive victory to turn the tide and end the conflict once and for all. Gathering his trusted advisors and elite warriors, James proposed a bold plan to launch a surprise attack on the enemy's central command post. If we can take out their command center, we can cripple their ability to coordinate and sustain their attacks, James explained. His advisors and warriors, including Anaya, nodded in agreement. Preparation for the mission began immediately. James worked tirelessly with his team, ensuring every detail was meticulously planned. The night before the mission, as they sat around a campfire, James addressed his warriors. Tomorrow we strike a decisive blow for our people. Stay strong, stay focused, and remember why we fight. Under the cover of darkness, James and his team made their way through the treacherous terrain to the enemy's command post. The journey was fraught with danger, but their determination never wavered. They encountered numerous obstacles, including traps and heavily armed patrols, but James's strategic brilliance and the team's skill saw them through. As they approached the command center, the tension was palpable. Every sound seemed magnified, every shadow a potential threat. James led with precision, his earth-honed instincts guiding him through the alien terrain. Finally, they reached the heart of the enemy's operations. The assault on the command center was swift and brutal. James and his warriors fought with unparalleled ferocity, their movements precise and deadly. The enemy, caught off guard by the intensity of the attack, quickly began to fall back. James pressed forward, his eyes set on the enemy commander, a ruthless tactician known for his cunning. The battle between James and the enemy commander was intense. Both fought with everything they had, their skills and determination pushing them to the limit. In the end, James's experience and resilience prevailed. With a final decisive strike, he defeated the commander, signaling the end of the battle. The enemy forces, now leaderless and disorganized, began to retreat. The victory was a turning point in the war, and James and his team returned to Zaloria as heroes. The tribe celebrated their triumph, but the cost of war was evident. Many had been lost, and the scars of battle ran deep. With the enemy defeated and the immediate threat to Zaloria neutralized, the focus shifted to healing and rebuilding. The village, though scarred by the conflict, was filled with a renewed sense of hope and determination. James and his wives worked tirelessly to restore their home and support the families of those who had been lost. The bonds within the community grew stronger as they faced their grief together. James took an active role in organizing efforts to rebuild homes, clear debris, and provide support to those in need. His hands-on approach and willingness to share in the labor earned him further respect and trust from the villagers. One day, as James worked alongside other villagers to repair a damaged building, a young boy named Taryn approached him. Father James, Taryn said, his eyes filled with admiration. How do we move forward after so much loss? James paused, his heart heavy with the weight of the boy's question. We honor those we have lost by continuing to build and grow. We support each other and we never forget the sacrifices that were made for our future. The boy nodded, taking James's words to heart. As the days turned into weeks, the village slowly began to heal. The physical scars of the war were mended, but the emotional wounds would take longer to heal. James, Anaya, and the other leaders of the tribe provided guidance and support, helping their people navigate the path to recovery. James also took time to reflect on his own life, the centuries he had lived, and the love that had sustained him. He realized that while the passage of time had been distorted, the depth of his relationships and experiences had not. He found solace in the knowledge that his love for Anaya and his other wives and their love for him transcended time. Anaya, sensing James's need for reflection, often joined him in quiet moments by the stream. One evening as they sat together, Anaya spoke softly. We have faced so much together, James. 
Our love has seen us through the darkest times. We will continue to grow and heal side by side. James took her hand, his heart filled with gratitude. I couldn't have done any of this without you, Anaya. You are my strength and my anchor. As the village continued to rebuild and heal, the bonds within the community grew stronger. The war had tested their resilience, but it had also reaffirmed their unity and determination. James and his wives remained pillars of strength and guidance, leading their people with love and wisdom. The healing process was slow, but with each passing day the village grew stronger. The scars of the past were a reminder of the challenges they had overcome, and the future was filled with hope and promise. James and Anaya, surrounded by their loving family and community, looked forward to the journey ahead, knowing that together they could face any challenge that came their way. With the enemy forces defeated and peace restored to Zaloria, the village began to enter a period of renewal and growth. The scars of the war, while still present, had started to fade, replaced by the promise of a brighter future. James and his wives continued to be at the forefront of this transformation, their leadership guiding the tribe toward a new era of prosperity. James, drawing on his vast experiences from both Earth and Zaloria, proposed several initiatives aimed at enhancing the tribe's quality of life. One of his primary focuses was on education and technological advancement. He believed that by blending the knowledge of Earth with Zalorian traditions, they could achieve remarkable progress. We need to prepare our children for the future, James addressed the council one evening. By integrating advanced agricultural techniques and educational programs, we can ensure the prosperity of our tribe for generations to come. Anaya and the other council members were supportive of James's vision. They saw the potential for growth and the benefits that these changes could bring. With their backing, James and his team began to implement these new initiatives. The construction of new schools and learning centers was the first step. These institutions would provide comprehensive education to the tribe's children, teaching them both traditional Zalorian wisdom and advanced scientific knowledge. James also introduced new farming techniques that increased crop yields and ensured food security for the village. As these changes took root, the village began to flourish. The children, eager to learn, embraced their studies with enthusiasm. The crops thrived and the community grew stronger and more self-sufficient. The sense of unity and purpose that had been forged in the aftermath of the war now drove them toward a prosperous future. Despite the progress and newfound prosperity, not everyone in the village was content with the changes. A small faction of traditionalists, led by a man named Raxer, viewed the blending of Earth and Zalorian knowledge as a threat to their cultural identity. They believed that the tribe was losing its way, and their resentment began to fester. Raxor, a charismatic and influential figure, started to gather support among those who shared his views. He held secret meetings, stirring up fear and distrust. We are losing our traditions, our identity, Raxor warned. James's influence is eroding the very fabric of our society. The discontent grew, and soon the council began to hear murmurs of dissent. Anaya, sensing the rising tension, approached James with her concerns. Raxor is gathering followers, she said. He believes that the changes we are making are destroying our culture. James frowned, his mind racing. We need to address this before it escalates. We cannot allow division to undermine everything we've worked for. James and Anaya decided to hold a village assembly, inviting everyone to voice their concerns and engage in an open dialogue. The hope was that transparency and communication could bridge the growing divide. The assembly was tense. Raxer and his followers arrived with determined expressions while James, Anaya, and their supporters stood ready to defend their vision for the future. As the discussion began, Raxer wasted no time in voicing his grievances. We are Zalorians, Raxer declared, his voice echoing through the hall. Our traditions and way of life have sustained us for centuries. We cannot abandon them for foreign ideas and technologies. James stepped forward, his tone calm but firm. Our traditions are important, and they will always be a part of who we are. But progress does not mean abandoning our identity. It means evolving and adapting to ensure our survival and prosperity. The debate was heated, with passionate arguments on both sides. As the assembly wore on, it became clear that compromise and understanding were needed to resolve the conflict. Anaya, always the voice of reason, addressed the gathering. We must find a way to honor our traditions while embracing the benefits of progress. Our strength lies in our unity, 
and we cannot afford to be divided. After hours of discussion, a resolution began to take shape. James proposed the creation of a council of elders, a group dedicated to preserving Zalorian traditions while guiding the integration of new knowledge and practices. This council would ensure that the tribe's cultural heritage remained intact while fostering innovation and growth. Raxer, though reluctant, agreed to the compromise. The idea of a council of elders resonated with the traditionalists, offering a way to protect their identity while allowing for progress. With the agreement in place, the village began to move forward, united once again. The Council of Elders was established, and James continued to work closely with them to ensure that the tribe's evolution honored their rich cultural heritage. The threat of division had been averted, but the experience served as a reminder of the importance of balance and understanding. James, Anaya, and their allies remained vigilant, committed to guiding their tribe through the challenges of change and ensuring a future where tradition and progress coexisted harmoniously. As the village continued to grow and thrive, James felt a renewed sense of purpose. The path ahead was not without obstacles, but he knew that with the support of his family and community, they could overcome any challenge. Together, they would build a future that honored the past while embracing the possibilities of tomorrow. Peace and prosperity had returned to Zaloria, and the tribe was thriving under the balanced leadership of James Anaya and the newly formed Council of Elders. The integration of traditional Zalorian wisdom with advanced earth technologies had brought remarkable progress. However, as the village flourished, a new, unforeseen threat began to emerge. Far to the north, rumors spread of a powerful and aggressive tribe known as the Crichtons, who had begun expanding their territory with ruthless efficiency. The Crichtons were technologically advanced and militarily superior, having conquered numerous smaller tribes. Their ambitions now turned towards the prosperous and united Zaloria. One evening, a scout arrived in the village, his face etched with urgency. The Crichtons are advancing towards our borders, he reported to the council. Their numbers are great and their intentions are clear. They seek to conquer. The council convened immediately, the atmosphere tense with concern. Anaya addressed the assembly, her voice steady but resolute. We cannot ignore this threat. We must prepare our defenses and seek alliances with neighboring tribes. United, we can repel the Crichtons. James, his military instincts kicking in, spoke up. We need to understand their tactics and technology. I will lead a reconnaissance mission to gather intelligence on the Crichtons. Knowledge will be our greatest weapon. The council agreed, and preparations began. James selected a small team of skilled warriors and scouts for the mission. They set out under the cover of night, their objective clear but perilous. The journey to the Crichton territory was arduous filled with natural obstacles and the constant threat of detection. After several days of travel, James and his team reached the outskirts of the Crichton encampment. What they saw confirmed their worst fears. The Crichtons were well organized, heavily armed, and their numbers were far greater than anticipated. James and his team carefully observed the enemy's movements, noting their strengths and potential weaknesses. With the necessary intelligence gathered, James and his team made the dangerous journey back to Zaloria. They arrived to find the village in a state of heightened alert, the preparations for defense well underway. James presented his findings to the council. The Crichtons are formidable, but they are not invincible. Their reliance on advanced technology makes them vulnerable to disruption. If we can sabotage their equipment, we can level the playing field. The council listened intently, their resolve hardening. Torin, now a respected leader in his own right, stood alongside his father. We must act swiftly and decisively. The unity and strength of our tribe will be our greatest asset. With the intelligence provided by James, the council formulated a comprehensive defense strategy. The plan involved strengthening the village's defenses, training the warriors in new tactics, and preparing for potential sabotage missions against the Crichton technology. Anaya and the Council of Elders worked tirelessly to maintain morale and unity within the tribe. They held ceremonies and gatherings to remind the people of their shared heritage and the strength that came from their unity. The village was a hive of activity, everyone contributing to the preparations in their own way. James, Torin, and a select group of warriors trained rigorously, honing their skills and preparing for the coming conflict. James's experience from Earth and his knowledge of Zalorian combat techniques proved invaluable. He led by example, his presence inspiring confidence and determination in his warriors. One evening, as the village gathered around a large bonfire, 
James addressed the crowd. We face a great challenge, but we are not alone. Our unity, our resilience, and our love for this land and each other will guide us to victory. We fight not just for ourselves, but for future generations. The villagers cheered, their spirits lifted by James's words. Anaya, standing beside him, added, We have faced many challenges before and emerged stronger. This time will be no different. Together, we are unstoppable. As the day of the battle approached, James and his team prepared for a critical mission, to infiltrate the Crichton camp and sabotage their technology. The success of this mission would be crucial in turning the tide of the battle. Anaya, ever supportive, helped to coordinate the efforts on the home front, ensuring that everything was in place for the impending conflict. On the night before the mission, James and Anaya shared a quiet moment together, reflecting on the journey that had brought them to this point. No matter what happens, know that I love you, James said, his voice filled with emotion. Anaya's eyes glistened with unshed tears. And I love you, James. We will get through this, together. With dawn breaking, James and his team set out on their mission, moving swiftly and silently through the forest. The tension was palpable as they approached the Crichton camp. They split into smaller groups, each with a specific target to sabotage. The operation was meticulously planned, but the risk was immense. As they planted explosive devices on key pieces of Crichton equipment, the threat of discovery loomed over them. James and his team worked quickly, knowing that the success of this mission was crucial for their village's survival. As the last device was set, James signaled his team to retreat. They moved back towards their lines, the countdown ticking in their minds. Just as they reached a safe distance, the explosions rocked the Crichton camp, sending shockwaves through the enemy ranks. The Crichton forces caught off guard and in disarray scrambled to respond. James and his team regrouped with the main defensive force of Zaloria, ready to launch their counterattack. With the Crichton technology crippled and their forces in chaos, the Zalorian warriors charged into battle with a fierce determination. James, Torin, and Anaya led the charge, their united front a symbol of the tribe's strength and resilience. The battle was intense and brutal, but the Zalorian warriors fought with unparalleled courage. The sabotage mission had given them the upper hand, and their strategic advantage began to show. The Crichton forces, unable to regain their footing, were gradually pushed back. As the sun set, the battle drew to a close. The Crichton forces, now leaderless and broken, retreated in defeat. The village erupted in cheers, their victory a testament to their unity and strength. James, Anaya, and Torin stood together, their hearts filled with pride and relief. The threat had been vanquished and Zaloria was safe once more. The scars of the battle would remain, but so too would the bonds that had been forged in the crucible of conflict. In the aftermath of the battle, the village began to rebuild once more. The lessons learned and the unity strengthened during this time would guide them into the future. James and Anaya, their love and partnership unwavering, looked forward to the next chapter of their extraordinary journey, knowing that together they could overcome any challenge. The victory over the Crichtons brought a wave of relief and celebration to Zaloria, but it also left the village with the task of healing and rebuilding. The battle had taken its toll, and the scars, both physical and emotional, were evident in every corner of the community. James and Anaya, along with Torin and the Council of Elders, immediately focused on the reconstruction efforts. They organized work teams to repair damaged structures, clear debris, and ensure that everyone had the resources they needed to recover. One day, as James supervised the rebuilding of a communal hall, he noticed a group of children playing nearby. They laughed and ran, their joy a stark contrast to the recent turmoil. Among them was Taryn, the young boy who had approached James with questions during the preparations for battle. Taryn ran up to James, his eyes shining with curiosity. Father James, will we be safe now? Will the Crichtons come back? James knelt down to Taryn's level, placing a reassuring hand on his shoulder. We have fought hard to protect our home, Taryn. We will remain vigilant, but I believe we are safe now. The strength of our people and our unity will keep us secure. The rebuilding process was slow but steady. The village's sense of community grew stronger as everyone pitched in to help. James continued to lead by example, working tirelessly alongside the villagers and offering words of encouragement and support. 
Anaya played a crucial role in addressing the emotional wounds left by the conflict. She organized gatherings where people could share their experiences, grieve for those they had lost, and find comfort in the company of their neighbors. These gatherings helped to foster a sense of solidarity and resilience. One evening, as the village gathered around a large bonfire, Anaya spoke to the crowd. We have faced a great challenge and emerged victorious, but now we must heal and rebuild. Our strength lies in our unity, and together we will create a future filled with hope and prosperity. The villagers cheered, their spirits lifted by Anaya's words. James, standing beside her, felt a deep sense of pride and gratitude. He knew that their journey was far from over, but with Anaya and their community by his side, he was ready to face whatever came next. With the village steadily rebuilding, James and Anaya turned their attention to the future. The Crichton threat had highlighted the need for stronger alliances and better communication with neighboring tribes. James proposed an initiative to strengthen these relationships and ensure that Zaloria would never face such a threat alone again. Torin, who had proven himself as a capable leader during the battle, volunteered to lead a delegation to neighboring tribes. We must build bridges and forge alliances, he said. Together we can create a network of support and cooperation that will benefit us all. James and Anaya supported Torin's vision and helped him prepare for the journey. The delegation set out with gifts and messages of peace, determined to strengthen the bonds between the tribes. Meanwhile, back in Zaloria, James continued to implement the educational and technological initiatives that had been set in motion before the war. The new schools and learning centers thrived, providing the next generation with the knowledge and skills they needed to lead. Anaya focused on cultural preservation, ensuring that the tribe's rich traditions were passed down alongside the new advancements. She organized festivals and ceremonies that celebrated Zaloria's heritage, bringing the community together in joyous celebration. One day, as James and Anaya walked through the village, they marveled at the transformation. The village, once scarred by war, now bustled with life and activity. The crops flourished, children played, and the sounds of laughter and music filled the air. James turned to Anaya, his heart full. We have come so far, Anaya. Our people are stronger than ever, and the future looks bright. Anaya smiled, her eyes reflecting the happiness and pride she felt. Yes, James. Together we have built something beautiful and enduring. Our legacy will live on in the hearts and minds of our people. As the months passed, Torin's delegation returned with news of successful alliances. The neighboring tribes had welcomed Zaloria's overtures of peace and cooperation, recognizing the benefits of unity. These new relationships brought trade, shared knowledge, and mutual support, further enriching the lives of Zaloria's people. James and Anaya continued to lead with wisdom and compassion, their partnership a source of inspiration for the entire village. They knew that challenges would continue to arise, but they were confident in their ability to face them together. One evening, as they sat by the stream where they had shared so many moments of reflection and love, Anaya looked at James with a serene smile. We have faced the darkness and emerged into the light. Our love and our community have seen us through. James took her hand, his heart filled with love and gratitude. And we will continue to grow and thrive, Anaya. Our journey is far from over, but I am ready for whatever comes next, as long as we face it together. Under the twin moons of Zaloria, James and Anaya embraced the future with hope and determination. They had built a legacy of unity strength and love that would endure for generations, guiding their people through whatever challenges lay ahead. As Zaloria continued to thrive under the leadership of James, Anaya, and Torin, a new mystery began to unfold. Reports started trickling in from the newly allied tribes about strange occurrences at the far edges of their territories, disappearances, unexplained phenomena, and signs of an unknown presence. The elders of Zaloria grew concerned and the council called an emergency meeting. James, Anaya, and Torin listened as the representatives from the allied tribes described their experiences. Entire villages have gone silent, one elder reported. There are no signs of struggle, but the people are simply gone. Torin, ever the strategist, leaned forward. We need to investigate this immediately. If there's a new threat, we must understand it before it reaches our borders, James agreed. I'll lead a team to the affected areas. We need to gather as much information as possible and determine the nature of this threat. Anaya, while concerned, knew the importance of the mission. B-1 
Be careful, James. We don't know what we're dealing with. James and Torin assembled a small group of elite warriors and scouts, and together they set off toward the areas where the strange occurrences had been reported. The journey took them deep into uncharted territories, where the landscape became increasingly unfamiliar and eerie. As they ventured further, they began to notice signs of the mysterious presence. Unusual patterns in the earth, strange symbols carved into trees, and an unnatural silence that seemed to envelop the land. The closer they got to the affected areas, the more they felt a palpable sense of dread. One night as the group camped in a dense forest, James took the first watch. As he stared into the darkness, he couldn't shake the feeling that they were being watched. The hairs on the back of his neck stood on end as he scanned the trees, searching for any sign of movement. Suddenly a faint glow appeared in the distance. James quietly roused Torin and the others and they moved cautiously toward the light. What they found left them speechless, a massive ancient structure partially buried in the earth, emanating a soft, pulsating glow. The architecture was unlike anything James had ever seen, with intricate designs and alien symbols covering its surface. As they approached the structure, the ground beneath them began to vibrate, and a low hum filled the air. The warriors gripped their weapons, ready for anything, but nothing could have prepared them for what happened next. The symbols on the structure began to glow brighter, and a doorway slowly opened, revealing a dark passage leading deep underground. James felt a mix of fear and curiosity. We need to explore this, he said, his voice steady despite the unease in his chest. Whatever is causing the disappearances might be connected to this structure. With Torin by his side, James led the team into the passage. The air grew colder as they descended and the walls seemed to pulse with energy. The deeper they went, the more they sensed an ancient, powerful force at work. Finally, they reached a vast chamber where they were confronted by a sight that defied explanation. A massive, crystalline structure at the center of the chamber, radiating a blinding light. The air crackled with energy, and James realized that this was the source of the strange phenomena. As they approached the crystal, they were suddenly enveloped by a wave of energy that sent them sprawling to the ground. James struggled to his feet, his vision blurred, and saw ghostly figures emerging from the crystal, figures that looked like the missing villagers. Torin reached out to touch one of the figures, but his hand passed through it like mist. They're not real, he said, his voice filled with awe. These are projections, echoes of the people who disappeared. James's mind raced as he tried to make sense of what they were seeing. This crystal, it's some kind of device. It's pulling people in and storing their consciousness. As they continued to study the crystal, they realized that the energy it emitted was unstable. The crystal was breaking down, and with it the consciousness of those it had absorbed. We need to shut this down, James said urgently. If we don't, those people will be lost forever. Using all of their combined knowledge, James and Torin worked to disrupt the crystal's energy field. It was a race against time as the chamber began to shake and the crystal's light grew more intense. Finally, with a surge of determination, they succeeded in severing the energy flow, and the crystal began to crack and shatter. As the crystal collapsed, the ghostly figures flickered and then vanished. The chamber fell silent, and the oppressive energy dissipated. The team slowly made their way back to the surface, the weight of what they had witnessed heavy on their minds. When they returned to Zaloria, they reported their findings to the council. The destruction of the crystal had stopped the disappearances, but the loss of those who had been absorbed was a sobering reminder of the dangers that still lurked in their world. The events surrounding the ancient structure and the mysterious crystal marked a turning point for Zaloria and its people. The realization that such powerful unknown forces existed in their world led to a renewed commitment to unity and vigilance. James and Anaya, now seasoned leaders, understood that the challenges they faced would only grow more complex. They began to focus on strengthening the bonds between Zaloria and its allies, ensuring that they could respond swiftly and effectively to any future threats. Torin, inspired by his experiences with the ancient structure, proposed the creation of a network of scouts and researchers dedicated to exploring and cataloging the unknown regions of their world. This initiative, which he called the Sentinels of Zaloria, would serve as the first line of defense against any hidden dangers. James fully supported the idea. Knowledge is our greatest weapon, he said. By understanding our world and the forces within it, we can protect our people and preserve our way of life.
The Sentinels quickly became a respected and vital part of Zalorian society. Their expeditions uncovered lost knowledge, ancient technologies, and new allies, all of which contributed to the tribe's continued growth and prosperity. As the years passed, Zaloria became a beacon of unity, strength, and wisdom. The alliances forged with neighboring tribes brought peace and cooperation to the region, and the tribe's advanced knowledge and technology made them a formidable force for good. James and Anaya, though older now, remained active in guiding their people. They had built a legacy that would endure for generations, a legacy rooted in the values of love, unity, and resilience. One day, as they walked hand in hand through the bustling village, Anaya turned to James with a contented smile. We have faced so much together, James. Our love and our people have carried us through every trial. James squeezed her hand, his heart full of gratitude. We have built something extraordinary, Anaya. Our journey has been long, but it has been worth every moment. As they approached the stream where they had shared so many quiet moments, they paused to take in the beauty of the land they had fought to protect. The twin moons reflected in the water casting a serene glow over the village. James looked into Anaya's eyes, knowing that their love and partnership had been the cornerstone of everything they had achieved. No matter what the future holds, we will face it together. Our legacy will live on in our children, in our people, and in the unity we have fostered. Anaya nodded, her eyes filled with love. Together we have created a future filled with hope and promise. And that, James, is a legacy worth leaving behind. Under the twin moons of Zaloria, James and Anaya embraced the future with a sense of peace and fulfillment. They had built a world where love, unity, and strength would guide their people through whatever challenges lay ahead, ensuring that the light of Zaloria would shine brightly for generations to come.